All right, let's go out to H Town and talk to Jason. What's up, Jason? What's going on, Doctor John? What up, man? How we doing? Oh, pretty good. How are you? Good, good, good. What's up, brother? Hey, so um, I'm finding myself at 52, pretty much in complete rebuild mode. Tell me about it. So the last couple of years, I uh, I struggled with alcohol. I uh, lost a really good job. I lost a wife. Uh, during that time, I got a DUI. Uh, going through that process, and I right now I'm doing real good. I've uh, been sober eight months almost. Hey, all right. And uh, I'm 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 doing fairly well. Uh, I, during that time, also, I did not make some uh, so good uh, financial decisions. Yeah. So I'm pretty much by myself. Not by myself. I have my children, but. Uh, just find myself just kind of rebuilding and just looking to uh, see or, or go through the process of, of, of trying to do this and, and just to get in a better place. Yeah, man, dude, like, I can't tell you how proud of you I am. No, and, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, that. hold on here. Like, I don't, I'm not just blowing that off. I don't want you just to like deflect it because you're good at that. You've probably been deflecting that your whole life. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly good at that. You're yes. great at it because you don't believe it. You think I'm lying to you. So here's how I'm not lying to you. Um, you got hit so hard. Actually, you're a boxer that got knocked out. Stone knocked out. And that's when most go, dude, I'm, this is, I'm not in for this. And you slowly picked yourself back up off the canvas. And now you're standing up, you're clear eyed and you're have one hand on the top rope and you're thinking about climbing back in the ring. That is courage, brother. That is courage. That is courage. And most men quit and you're not. So I'm not blowing smoke at you, dude. I'm not blowing smoke at all. It's pretty impressive. Um, Thank you, so when you say you lost your wife, uh, did she leave you or did she pass away? Um, she left me. She left me. Okay. So you lost a job. You lost your wife. You, you kind of soft pitched. I kind of struggled with alcohol a little bit and then I lost everything. So I'm guessing you didn't just kind of struggle with alcohol a little bit. Tell me a little bit about that. No, uh, not alcohol has, has, uh, pretty much been a part of my life, uh, my adult life. How come? Uh, and it got real, it got real, just, it was just the norm. I know, but, but most of us, most folks who drink like that, that's the way their bodies figured out how to not deal with how bad life hurts. So what does life uh, hurt, man? You know, uh, I'm still in that process, Dr. John. Uh, I, I think I, I struggled uh, a lot as a child. Um, uh, I, my real dad, he, uh, he uh, really didn't have anything to do with me. Uh, and I was adopted early by the man who I call my father, who, um, who adopted me when I was six, married my mother. And um, not a terrible childhood, but it wasn't, it wasn't the best either. But I, I never really fit into, I always felt like I never really fit into his family. And um, just struggled with uh, the acceptance part of things. And, um, I, I guess I just dealt with it in my own ways throughout the years and, and never really addressed it, you know, until now, you know, it just, now is when I'm really, really wanting to sit down and, 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 and figure out what's really going on. Why, why I've been that way so for, for so many years. I, I, I can't answer the whole question, but I can get pretty dang close. I'm sure you haven't done this, but I hope at some point you will. But I need to go back for just a second and talk to six-year-old Jason who is holding the hand of a man who's not his daddy, but a man who's saying, I'll step in the gap here if it's what it takes for me to marry your mama. And everyone around you cheering, and you're supposed to be happy about that. Yeah. And God bless him, he put food on the table. It never felt like home, but at least you had a roof and you had food. 
Yeah. But that six-year-old little boy is still haunted by that one damning question, which is, Daddy, what was so bad about me that you left? Yeah, he was just, he was never there to begin with. That's what I'm saying. And I, and I didn't, I didn't find out who he actually was till I was like 27. Yeah, but he was a ghost. That. He was a ghost. Right, right, exactly. But you've got your own kids, right? Yes, four did, of them. Did you walk out on them? Oh, no. Yeah, you can't even wrap your head around it, can you? I hadn't, um, I hadn't always been the best dad, but I've... Hold on, I've none just, of us have. Never, none of us have. Yeah. We've all struggled, but listen, don't evade it. You can't imagine walking out on your kid. No, no. How the hell did your old man walk out on you? Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. And one magic thing about alcohol is it plays a pretty good chemical proxy to connection. Yeah. And so when we're lonely, when our body's screaming at us that Someone's going to leave. Someone's going to leave. Alcohol does make that go away for a while until it kills us, right? Until it blows up everything. Right. Like I used to tell people for years, the worst part about alcohol is that it works until it doesn't, right? Exactly. Exactly. So I'll probably give you several things I want you to do for homework at, by the time this call's over, but I want you to write a letter by hand on notebook paper on a yellow pad. Go to Walgreens or Walmart or something, get a yellow pad. And I want you to write a letter to six-year-old Jason and tell that little boy it was not his fault. His daddy walked out because something was wrong with his daddy, not him. That was a good kid that deserved to have his old man around. Take him to Oilers games and Astros games, even when they were terrible back then. <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Until you let that little six-year-old boy stop fighting for you, you're going to always have that gap. And then you got to deal with, you're 56, right? 52? How old? 52. 52. Yeah. So this part sucks, right? At 51 and a half, you decided, I'm done. I'm getting sober. I'm about to lose. I've lost almost everything. True. It's time. And there's that moment when it's like the Rocky song is playing. And you found yourself, you're like 100 pounds overweight. You go to the gym and you do that one hard workout. And then you look in the mirror the next morning, you kind of look exactly the same. Yeah, and, and I struggle with that too, Dr. John. I, I struggle with what I call uh, the need for uh, instant transformation for instant gratification. There you go. You know, uh, yep. and I, I don't see the results as fast as I would like to see. Them, That's you know? right. And you're coming up on the holidays. Holidays are going to be lonely this time around, aren't they? I'm 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 making things uh making plans to spend a lot of hope with my kids. Good. Dude, I'm so yeah. gosh, I'm so freaking proud of you. And believe it or not, there's one other thing, Dr. John. What's that? Uh so Mother's Day of this past year, I actually lost my mother. Oh my gosh. And I haven't I haven't even found a way to grieve her. Um we had uh, not not a real strong relationship towards the end. Uh there were some things that happened in the past with her that I, I wasn't real proud of or held against her. Mm -hmm. And I just haven't, I hate to say this, but at the time when she passed, I almost felt relieved. Yeah. Hey, don't, don't, that's, that's a very common response. And then you probably felt guilty for feeling relieved, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it just goes in a circle. And so yeah. here's a, this isn't going to heal it, but this is a good way to start. It's a way to get out of the starting blocks. Okay. Do you have a pen with you? I do. All right. I do. You have to write three letters to mom over the course of about three weeks. One a week, okay? Okay. One of the letters is how much I miss you. How much I miss you, mom. I went through hell this last year. My wife left. I lost my job. I'm finally getting sober and clean, and I miss you. I'm okay. always going to miss you. Love, Jason. And I want that to be a couple of pages. I want you to remember some fun stuff y'all did as kids, how she held it together after your dad left. I want you to remember some good stuff. The second letter is, unfreaking believable mom. And I want you to tell the truth. 
When I was a kid, you le- right, right? I want you to go all the way through the hard stuff. The anger. Sure. Dear mom, I'm really mad. And you know the things that she did that you held against her, that all that stuff, I want you to get that on paper. And then here's the third letter. Dear mom, I'm sober now. I'm growing up. Here's what you're going to miss. You're going to miss watching your boy rise from the ashes. You're going to miss your boy becoming the best dad of all time. You're going to miss your boy becoming a success story, going to the gym, getting his finances in order, meeting somebody new, being the greatest dad who shows up for his kids, and then being the best granddad that ever lived. Okay? Yeah, I just uh, I just had my um, my oldest daughter just had my second grandson. There grandson. you go. So I'm 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 ecstatic about that. Yes. And I don't want to say this is a chance to do it over, but this is kind of a chance to reimagine it, right? Absolutely. There you go. Yep. I'd love for you to start writing that little those two little grandkids letters so they have a 18 years with the letters from granddad. Okay. And let me tell you this, my grandmother passed away a couple of years ago. I have tattooed on my arm the last card she sent me in her handwriting. It says, we love you. And I had them lift that, that handwriting and permanently put on my body. That's how much it meant to me, that letter from my grandmother. And I want your grandkids to have a, a, a whole thing. And when your grandkids get into some trouble when they're middle school and high school, which they will, I want you to be able to sit down with them in your 60s and go, Hey, we're going to coffee. We're going to pan- get pancakes at Waffle House. I'm going I'm to talk to you about some stuff I went through. And you're going to redeem your story. Those bricks you're carrying around, you're going to take them out of your backpack and set that crap down. It's over. And then you're going to pave the sidewalks that those kids walk on, on your story. See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This is legacy, brother. This is how you change your family tree. Now, I've I've thrown a bunch of like Instagrammy stuff at you. I'm gonna make it pretty concrete, okay? <laughs> is that cool? Okay. Awesome, yes. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna load you up. But if I load you up, you gotta send those uh you gotta send those letters, right? Absolutely. All right. I'm gonna send you both of my Wall Street Journal best selling books. I have them. You got them? You already got them? I've already got them. All right, well, I ain't sending you nothing then. <laughs> All right. So you already got them. I got them. I'm gonna send you Financial Peace University for free. I got that too. You got, have you used it? (laughs) I'm starting January. Are you going to actually do it? Yes, sir. Do you have every dollar? Uh, Yes, I signed up for all that. Okay. I'm not giving you nothing then. What do you need? What can I do? I I I guess I just needed a, 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 just a voice of reassurance. That's what I needed. What do you really need? (sighs) Just, you know, I needed another man to tell me that I was heading the right direction. Jason, you're swimming upstream of a culture that tells you you're washed up, a culture that tells you you're a failure, a culture that tells you ain't worth a dime. You're absolutely worth it, every step you take. Are you going to drink again? No, sir. No, sir. You got a job? I do. I do. It, it's a good job. Okay. We're going to hang on to that job? Hey, I'm I'm going to hang on to it, but I'm also uh, I'm, I'm going to look for something else that may be a little bit better. Okay. I I believe in my skills and, and, and my knowledge and uh But I you're going to be about for. you're going to be about serving the customer, taking care of people, solving problems. You're going to do work with excellence, oh, I, right? Absolutely. That's what I do. That's what I do. And you're going to get that debt paid off so you're free. Nobody owns Jason. Right, exactly. You're going to write each one of your kids a letter and say, hey, I wasn't the best dad, but I love you guys and never, ever doubt it. I was going through some tough stuff. It was never about you guys, and I'm spending the rest of my life being the best father that ever existed. Yeah, you're worth it. You're worth every step of it, my brother. Every single step. I got something you don't have. Aha. We're going to send you grandparents and grandkids, the questions for humans deck. 
I'm going to mail that out to you. And that way you can chit chat with your grandkids. One of them's going to be way too young, but you can still chit chat with them. Go for that. And man, I'm so proud of you, dude. 52 having to look in the mirror and start over. Deal with your DUI. It's going to be expensive. Be honest with the judge. Take care of your business there in Houston. Don't ever drink and drive. Don't put other people at risk. You're better than that. Don't put you at risk. Let's make all the changes. Let's go get them. 2024 is the year Jason continues his journey. Eight months in for the rest of your life, my brother. I'm so proud of you. 